Ida, the wayward bird. Ida was just the little wayward sturgeon. She thought there must be more of this sex life than just swimming over each other's eggs. She said, I'm going to find out for myself. So she went upstairs and put a little badge on her right shoulder, which said, I will share. And then she slipped down the back stairs, out into the Gulf Stream, and drifted up with the crowd. And what a crowd! All the barracudas were out. A couple of sharks and one little weak fish swimming backwards. Now Ida drifted through all this nonsense until she came to Palm Beach, where she ran into Bertha, an old deep sea bass. Bertha tried everything twice and hated it. But being a sea bass, she thought she'd try just once more. Shows how foolish fish can be from time to time. Now, she hadn't seen Ida since she was little more than an egg. And she said, Ida, a girl with a face and figure like yours ought to do things and go places. Why don't you go down to the bottom of the Gulf Stream where fish are fish? Ida said, okay, she was only 12. So she went right into an old-fashioned nosedive right down to the bottom of the Gulf Stream. She'd never seen so many daring exposures. She had a head right against a great big coral palace, almost as big as the Breakers Hotel. Fish were doing things that only fish can do in Florida and get away with. Ida was dying for an affair, but she only had on an old sport. Even when she did her bubbles, no one looked. She did lovely bubbles. She could do them standing up or sitting down. She didn't care on the slightest. But everybody was way beyond bubbles. So feeling very sad and sexy, she swam away. Now, she hadn't gone very far when she came to an information booth with a mother of pearl front. On the door it said, love for sale. Appetizing young love for sale. And Ida swam right in. And there on an old oyster bed, telling an old group of fish how to be gay, was the world's oldest living mermaid. It was really Fanny Board, Fanny Board, Fanny Board. Fanny Board, Fanny Board, Fanny Board. Ida could see that she had the face of a child, but that was all. But Fanny was no fool. She hadn't lived through three generations for nothing without changing her expression. She said, now, Ida, you throw yourself right down on that park here of barnacles, and I'll put in a couple of calls, and we'll have some fun. That was Fanny all over. Fun. Now, downstairs in the basement with the radio turned on was old Tristan Wisen, I, the octopus. Exercising his 16 tiller legs. On the end of each toe was a little suction pump. An invention of his own. And amidst the most complicated one man of Jarjo, the telephone rang. It was Fanny. She said, Hurry up, Tristan. I want you to work on a little fish called Ida. She's going to lay an egg today. But she doesn't know it. Now, Ida was just beginning to feel the points of the barnacle when suddenly she found herself in the most terrifying embrace. Tristan was on every side with his old invention going like mad. And then she fainted and didn't know a thing until suddenly she heard Fanny say, My God, Ida, you've shared. It's caviar. 